dudes and girls. So, we're going to be showing you the Grub Clear, which is the new OP Clear they've been using out from the East in Korea, China, EU, even. That's more in the West, but, you know, either way, we're going to be showing you how it's done. So, we're up against Master Yi, Nasus, MF, Vokaz, Raven. That's a spicy team. Um, so, first things first, for the Grub Clear, you kind of want to just make sure that you are trying to be exactly at the grubs as fast as possible and be as strong as you can. I play on a smurf because the few times in high elo post midnight are just way too long, bro. Oh, this is the only smurf account I got right now. Unless you want to watch me wait 10 minutes for a game and get a win trade, I can do that. That'd be wonderful. I did that all yesterday. But either way. So, the grub clear. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, you're basically going to do a full clear, but you're going to skip out of the red and the krugs early on. So you're just going to do raptors, wolves, grub blue. And then you're going to run all the way down. You're going to farm red, krugs. You're going to do lot scuttle, reset, raptors, wolves, grump. And you will be at the grubs at perfect timing with a meaty reset. And I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do with that meaty reset. It kind of reminds me of the wolves clear. If you guys remember that, the wolf clear from a long time ago. Because it's very fast to get level 5 as well. I think that's one of the main strengths of it. So you're basically just allowing yourself to get as strong as possible. And secure the grubs as smooth as possible. And a lot of people are probably wondering, well, what's the uh, value of the grubs? Well, the grubs are not very valuable in what they actually do for you. It's more so the value in the XP that they give to you. And um, I think that's very important. That getting that early level 6. Because getting the early level 6 as Kane is very, very nice. Because... One, it's kind of nice to kind of AFK clear as Kane because you don't really want to look for ganks too much. Ganking as Kane is not as easy as it can always be. Like, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's very hard. It depends on the matchup, really, um, you know, in the jungle and in the lane. So, mid's going to be pretty hard to gank until post 6 because, you know, how's our ult and then bot lane? Bot lane will be pretty good to gank. We can honestly maybe skip out of the bot scuttle and look to gank bot, depending on if they push or not. So, someone in my chat was asking me earlier how to know if it lane is gankable. Right here, it, would, it looks like it's gankable. It's not, because look at the HP, and look at Draven damage, and then he has his E, and then he has Ghost Flash. So you kind of just have to understand all the strengths and weaknesses they have, and all the strengths and weaknesses you have. So if Jace is that low, like, maybe we could have had Jace TP back, and then we can just full set this guy. But I think normally you just want to play a little bit more safe, a little bit more respectful. Uh, Master Yi, to make sure that you're picking out with enemy tokens. He's probably full clearing towards bots, so he'll be in his bot set right now. So if they push past this terrain right here, that means it's gankable. If they push past this terrain, it's free gank. So we're going to keep an eye on this. And just because my bot lane is kind of equal HP and there's not too many minions. Another thing that you have to worry about just for your first gank is if there's too many minions. If there's too many minions for the first gank, they can kind of act as a, you know, as a third man in these type of situations. Because they do a lot of damage. Thankfully, with a champ like Kane, you have a lot of AoE. So if you need me, you can always just one-shot the wave. But right here, yeah, we're probably going to look to just not do the... Uh, do the scuttle and just look for the gank. So, I'm gonna ping out. We're going to. Oh! Nice. Huge. Okay. So, normally you would do the scuttle, but like I said, you could actually find a gank here instead. And I'm just gonna reset instantly. I'm gonna get my item, which is gonna be a Tiamat, because Tiamat will help me clear faster and it also snowballs very, very fast. Because you're uh, clearing faster than, you know, the Genius Hunter. Just, it's a very low CD, and the more stacks you get, the faster you're going to be able to use your team at, the faster you're going to be able to clear. Team at's really nice because it kind of works as like a third ability, because your Q is a dash and a strike, which is two different abilities in one. But you can use your team at mid Q, so it kind of acts like that third ability, right? So, right here, we're going to keep an eye on mid. And we're also going to just look to do this. See, if this Master went a little bit overzealous and look for the fight here, then I would just be able to collapse on him and kill him. But he doesn't. He's just going to look to double scuttle me, which is perfectly fine because I'm going to get the grubs. And you're going to see I'm going to be way more ahead of him in XP. And we also have the scaling objective of being able to take towers faster. We also have that strength to be able to split push later on. So if done properly, you should be level 5 and you should have a nice little reset. And you'll be perfectly set to do the grubs. This is one of my favorite clears to do right now. Now keep in mind, a challenger jungler such as myself is gonna have a lot of different clears to use. This is one that you could use pretty consistently. My favorite to use always will always just be a full clear. And right now I'm just gonna gotta hold on to my smite as well for the grubs. I usually like to hold on to my smite for the last grub, not use it for the first two. And I'll show you guys how to do the grubs relatively fast as well. So <laughs> if you guys don't know, the grubs move, so you can just slap this big boy, move him over, stack them all top of each other, and just give them all. 
and just keep using her AOE, and that's how you secure the grubs in five minutes. Nice. Let me just keep autoing you and you, and oh, we also had our mid move over. So look at how much XP I'm getting out of this as well. And we could also just look for like a little invade here if his Massey can clear all of his camps. Exactly when I thought he would. Oh, sweet. Yeah, look, invade. Sometimes it's good. Even though he has been AFK farming, sometimes you can catch their camps off timer. So I didn't actually have any intel that his top side would be up, but you know, it takes around a second or two to check. And if I want to, I can get six off rugs and look to fight him. My likelihood of killing him is solid. I mean, I'm relatively strong. He's going to be around the same gold reset as I, so we'll see. Use this to kill all these, and we're going to put a ward here. I'm six, and we can just look to force a dive in bot. I'll show you guys what you can do with an early XP advantage. Really smooth. Extremely sweet. Sweet and smooth. I love it. All right, so we are going to look to gank bot lane. So the way that you want to kind of sh set up a dive, so this is much different than your normal gang, is you kind of want to play through the wave. So I actually would not look to dive on this wave because this is too small of a wave. They can clear it too quick. Usually want to wait for a cannon wave, which is this big boy coming in. But I'm going to keep my eye on bot lane here because if they ever overexert themselves, then I can just catch them out. So that's what you would you pretty much define as a, a bait, a baiting for a gang. So we're going to look to uh, wrap around on them. This is where Velkov's gonna look to get some vision, so if he walks to me, I can go on him. Ooh, Nautilus hitting that juicy little hook. Gonna just go inside this guy, come off, back up. Don't wanna ever go for too much. Just wanna make sure you're getting as much as you can while you can and not being a little bit too greedy. This guy trolling. Wait, what? I think I PayPal'd this guy way too much. All right, well, either way, let's go get Profane Hydra and Blue Form. I'm gonna make this game end real quick. Don't worry about it. Cool little fun fact, if you upgrade your form, you get all your HP and mana regen. And only real K mains upgrade form out of fountain. Oh, Draven got a solo kill. And even in this elo, there's people doing crazy stuff. <laughs> if killing the Draven, I mean, it's possible, but pretty unlikely. It's because he does have a lot of strength. And he has his E to kind of, so you can't get on top of him. Normally, I would need my ult if I want to, like, solo kill. So if someone's, like, very ahead, I need, like, everything up to be able to, like, pretty much solo kill the gank. He looks to gank mid, but this guy's like all MR, so you are. Just put a deep ward in the enemy jung. Whenever you're this ahead, you always want to make sure that you're living in the enemy jung. You're putting in a lot of vision, and you just gotta take it from them, because that's how you make the game end really fast. Alrighty, going every camp, but I go get all my bot side now. I can just. Cross through mid as well, so this guy's ult is coming up real soon, so if we get to play through this, then we can get a free kill mid, and then we can go get all of our bot side, and we also got a stop side, so we're three quadrant farming. Oh, you can see even Master Yi's coming, we can beat this. Hello, Master Yi. Easy peasy. Whoa. Okay, no one saw that. But right now, I don't really have ult, nor do I have flash. I can't even look for a player down bot. But if my team sets me up, then I can. So you always just kind of have to think like, okay, what are my options? What can I can? What can I do and what can't I do? Probably also going to get those grubs as they spawn too. For the grub rush. Paying for the grub win con. Grub win con basically means you have to end the, end the game really fast. Because normally you're giving the dragons for the grubs. Because you can't really get both. Unless you just have really good laners. But I mean, if you have really good laners, you're going to win no matter what, right? 
But uh, looks like this guy's gonna go for the grubs. As long as I get five, that's all that matters. I should be fast enough to go get five. I think this game I'll probably go hubris just because how snowbally that bad boy is. Let's see. I could go Axiomark as well, but uh, it's really hard to determine if you like uh, if I like Axiom or Hubris more. Assassin Snowball way harder in this meta, so you have to make sure that you're not just getting kills and you're not just getting a lot of CS, but you're also getting all the objectives that you can get. You don't want to give up too many objectives. So if he is on it, you should just get one. And I get five. And I kill him again. So I go kill Draven after. And then we can get tower. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say we can get tower, but we can get a lot done at least. Yeah, I just kind of spaced out the E so he can get free autos on me. Oh, I couldn't fist that guy. Alright. There we go, mid. So we're gonna wait for Mal's ulti and then we're just gonna kill this guy. See how important it is to kind of understand like the strengths of your team and like kind of just hang towards that. So, Miles is a very simple champion. One click ulti. Ulti up. And now we just invade this guy. Perma. I always hold my ult until he uses W. And then it's just free win. Hello, Chad Draven. Did you see I got my I got my main account challenger again? Nine years in a row. Where'd they go? They made a swift escape. Alright, well, Hubris is in around 100 gold. So I'm gonna make sure they were gonna get this dragon. Now, I'm not actually getting this dragon because I'm gonna play for a dragon win con. Because dragon win con is basically saying this game is going to go mid to late game. I don't want the games to ever go mid to late game if I'm playing an assassin. Because if any game's going past 30 minutes as an assassin, her win rate percentage wise is incredibly low. So you kinda wanna shy away from that. You just wanna make sure that you're looking at end games quick. And if you're gonna be doing this grub clear and securing all six grubs, well, I'll show you how to end it quick. We're gonna need that Rift Herald that we're gonna keep making plays. I'm just gonna reset right now. Normally you don't wanna reset too much when you're trying to end games fast, but no, get my hubris. That will help me stay on the map a lot longer. Cause hubris kinda acts as like an extra item whenever you get it stacked up and up and up and up because of how much damage you're getting. And then usually I don't like to reset when I have full items if I'm looking like 1v9 solo carry, so. I kill this guy, and I go top. If Hubris, the main thing you want to think of is you just want to make sure you're getting free kills, and then while it's proc, look to do as much as you can while you can. For the Axiom mark, you want to be very, like, what's the word? You want to be very aggressive with your ulti, like just using your ulti no matter what, and just trying to get as many kills as you can, because your ulti is your main source of damage, right? So having your ulti at a very loose C low CD is incredibly important. But I just think Hubris has a little bit more potential of solo carrying because more damage helps to stay on the map longer as well. Axiom is good if you're just like, I would say if you're gonna reset a lot. All right. So yeah, you can see invading just makes, I think another thing about invading is that it just makes the enemies not want to play the game, so. That's a good mental thing to do. Look at the enemies not want to play. Very important. Okay, I should always deafen. The jungler, I think it's always important to deafen. Especially if you're a losing jungler. Oh, yeah. So let me show you guys how to end early. Oh, we're gonna kill this guy and then we're going to. Oh, hello, Draven. I just wanna make sure you're holding onto your CDs as much as you can. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> he ghosted. Yeah, sometimes I hold onto my ulti just in case they flash so that way I can get them to you know, kind of waste that duration. So I'm gonna kill this with autos and then we're gonna rip this top and then we're gonna get an early in it. So now, believe it or not, whatever people say, oh, you should never get an early in him. It's true, but also it's not true. Because if you actually know the macro, then it actually is worth to get an early inhib. Because an early inhib, it gives a lot of free gold, and it 
gives a lot of free resources, but it applies an ungodly amount of pressure. Why does MF have TP? Oh. The hell? <laughs> okay, well, we didn't get the early... <laughs> we didn't get the early, uh... Really did. It's fun. I'm not gonna reset here. Save the map. So I'll probably work to get those two bot towers and I'll just keep getting kills. Oh, you're lucky he's there. Why does it kill you, big boy? Speaking of which, I'm gonna go kill them. Ow. Nice. Yeah, sometimes it's very important just to know how to survive because. Whoa. Whatever, goodness is. Because sometimes, because you're Kate, you're like a little mosquito buzzing around. So, knowing, knowing how to survive is incredibly important. Like, just be able to get out of sticky situations. Like, knowing how far you can go in and knowing how far you can go in. But, like, once your combo is done, you pretty much just try and survive at the end of that. Like, you just leave. You just try and exist. Because most of the time, you know, you're just going to die for free. So, a lot of Kate mains, you'll see them go in. Everything's gone and they still try and fight. It's like, no, once everything's gone, once everything's down, just try and get out, try and survive and let your team do some work. So it doesn't matter what elo you're in, as you can see, I'm on a smurf right now. And my team was able to clean up and do really well. The truth about being like a good consistent player is consistently setting up plays. So a lot of players, what they'll do is when they're playing in their elo or whatever, right? They'll make a play and they'll bank so much of their game on that one play that they'll be like, oh dude, how do we lose? Look at what I just did for my team. But it's like, any good player is making that same play that you're making over and over and over and over and over until the game's over, right? So, I just have to think of it like that. Like right there, I know the damage to kill Velkaza. I know I don't have the damage to kill Draven because he's level 12, Velkaza level nine. So you gotta just like map these things out in your brain. Like yeah, I can't solo kill this guy with, you know, a, a Q, Profane and W. And as you can see, because of uh, how fed I am, I'm looking to just kind of stay on the map for a lot of items to buy. Raven hard backs up, so sometimes whenever they want to stay under that tower and you know it's about to die, you can just wrap around them and they'll stay, but... He didn't stay. I'm gonna get Grudge. Yeah, Grudge is like one of your strongest power spikes, so normally the item combination that you're looking for right now is like a Profane into a Lethali item, so if you want to go Axiom, if you want to go Serpent, if you want to go Edge of Night, I want to go hubris i mean there's a lot of options right there's a lot of wonderful options so if you want to do all that it can work and then you can go grudge third i would always recommend grudge third so profane first grudge third second item do whatever and as you can see this is why oh i'll go back for that vote because i thought i had him <gasps> hit me oh if he didn't hit me he was 100 percent dead in all fairness though, I think he's still gonna die. A lot of people always seem to forget they can't get to chase them down like this. Yeah, pretty absurd champion, right? Uh you get out of vision. I wanna wait out his ulti. So if I didn't Q to get out of vision, then he would have just been able to Q me and kill me because I had no mana. But see, you regenerate bonus mana in the river and the jungle, so if you just keep that those plays in mind, kind of uh Like I said, learning how to survive is just putting just as important as knowing how to kill as a Kane. So you'll learn that's very important. And then I'm gonna reset my combo like that. Oh, so he's dead. Apparently not. All right, well, they notice when you're trying to 1v9 and like just solo carry all your games, you want to stay on the map as long as you can. Because the longer you stay on the map, the more XP you're gonna get, the more XP you're gonna get. That kind of is how you are so ahead. How high low players are always so strong and you know, low, low elo players always ask, why are they so strong? Why do they have so much CS? Well, because we don't reset as much. Cool. So now I can go Axie Mark. Very snowball items. So I have the two biggest snowball items in the game stacked atop each other along with the two highest damaging items in the game, Profane and Grudge. So what you're about to see is... Criminal. 
And see, notice, even though I'm so ahead and I'm, you know, playing relatively well, the game isn't over yet, 20 minutes. So this is why a lot of Kane mains lose a lot of their games, because it's so easy for the games to get sold out. But see, as a Kane main, you just need to make sure that you're always doing stuff. You're always farming, you're always looking for plays, and you just never ease up. Like, a lot of the time, you just need to keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. The more you do that, you know, the easier the game will be. Yeah, faster you just stands there and autos me, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna give him a 1k. Not ironically, you could lose a game like this. If faster he gets one damage item and like two defensive items, I'm never gonna kill him, ever. Alright, well, GG. Hope you boys enjoyed the group there. Peace out, YouTubes.